my story, I started fighting in family court in 2013, um, was doing all the right things, checking all the boxes, CPS, police, courts. Um, by 2016, my daughter um, was sexually abused with medical records proving at eight days apart. Um, when they were trying to bring me into court, I noticed silence me and take her. There was thankfully a car accident and I wound up fleeing. I didn't think I'd be gone. Um, I wound up living underground from April of 2016 all the way till I want to say December 2021, um, which six months after I fled, I wound up wanted for interference with child custody. So having to live that underground life because I was protecting both a son from the age of nine to 11, and then my baby girl who's 23 months old and could not speak. Um, and that was kind of a deal breaker for me. I have now returned. I was able to fight the system pro se. I never did jail time for the custodial interference. Thank God for that failure to appears. Um, and I was able to get rights to my daughter back, no supervision. I had supervision for years, but now I have a 10 year old and I've gone to the other extreme. And what I wanted to know is if there has been any studies done. And when I say the other extreme of compliance, right? Because I know mm -hmm. if even one time, because of my background, I don't return her. Or one time when I keep taking her back to school on Mondays, when I get her my first and third fifth weekends and she freaks out and goes into a PTSD trauma and I have to tell her everything's okay. It's gonna, it's not okay. She knows what she's going back to. Dad's an informant, 30 year criminal history. They literally ignore it. Um, am I damaging her more continuing to now tell her that it's okay when it's when it's not okay. You know, she'll become a teenager soon. And we'll tell her to look out for the signs of dating violence. We'll tell her as a woman that these things are not okay. Mm. But I have to explain to her, falling out at school when I take you back, and the principal actually said it this time, this past Monday, these cameras are watching you and mom's working really hard. And if you can't handle this, then you're not going to be able to go I'm not going to be able to go with mom anymore. Mm. And so now I, I, I got to be honest. I'm listening to your stories. And I know this is what I have to do. Or else I lose her again, by the way. For eight and a half years, she was gone. They took her kicking and screaming and trafficked her from Pennsylvania back to Texas when she was two. And we've just been back together for about five months now since mid-April. And so now I continue to tell her it's okay. She can go. It's going to be fine. And mom's coming back. And I drive four hours from Oklahoma, where I live, to Texas to have 20, 30 minute lunches with her. And they're allowing me to do that because I'm playing the game. But I wonder, like, what is the impact of us playing the game?